Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Ardent RDA, a project by Stan, Tenacious TX Vapes, and Times Vape. This RDA is considered the Dreamer Hybrid RDA, and I'll go ahead and get more into that when we open up the package. This product was sent to me by Stan for the purpose of this review. Let's go ahead and check out what comes in the box. The first thing you're going to see when you open the Ardent RDA is going to be your Ardent user manual. And this user manual is important for a few different reasons. Of course, with an RDA, they usually are pretty simple and self-explanatory. But because this one is an RDA that's designed to be hybrid on the Dreamer mech mod, there is some very important information that you do need to pay attention to in this manual if you plan to use this RDA in its hybrid mode. Here on this side, we do have the specifications. Let's go ahead and set the manual to the side. So we also have a spare 810 drip tip here. This is just going to be your clear acrylic drip tip here. It is 810. Inside this little black accessory box, you're going to have a pouch with a lot of extras. So let me go over some of the things that are included in this pouch and something that was included outside of this pouch that Stan has stated will be included. And that's going to be this guy over here. So as you can see, there is the little blue flathead screwdriver in the package, but Stan has opted for a much larger, beefier flathead screwdriver that he will be also including with this. So inside this bag, we have our typical spare O-ring, spare post screws. He included a spare studded 510 pin, as well as you're going to have a spare uh, little grommet that's going to go under your negative post, spare springs for the posts, and it looks like that's about it. Also, you have some negative post screws in there as well for your negative post. So lots of replacement pieces for this RDA should you lose a screw, a post screw, a negative screw, an O-ring. Pretty much he's got you covered for everything with this little accessory bag. Now let's go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes, and that is the Ardent RDA. So just going over some quick specifications for you. The Ardent RDA is primarily made of stainless steel. The color that I received, of course, is going to be the stainless steel. The drip tip that is included on top here is 810. Let me see if I can get that out. There we go, no problem. So it is an 810 goon style drip tip. You have the O-ring on the inner side of the catch cup there. Looking at the bottom, you can see it says Ardent, Stan, designed by Stan and manufactured by Times Vape. You have your copper 510 pin here, which does protrude very nicely. The total diameter of the Ardent RDA is going to be 27 millimeters, and there's a reason for that, and I'll get to that in a moment. On this side, you have the Times Vape logo, and on this side, you have Ardent. You have this 10 hole configuration for your airflow, which we'll go ahead and show more of that when we take the top cap off. And that is on both sides. So now let's go ahead and screw this down on something and take the top cap off. So as I mentioned before, it's got this smooth honeycomb side and bottom airflow. And the reason why they call that bottom airflow, let me go ahead and take this cup off and as you can see the airflow there that's milled into the side you have three airflow holes that are at an angle and there is a cutout there let me go ahead and grab a tool real quick so let's grab my little tool here and i'll show you how big these holes are as you can see they're big enough for my screwdriver to fit up in there and you can see that angle so the reason why they're calling it bottom side airflow is because even though it is on the side it's mimicking bottom airflow that it's coming up from the bottom and hitting your coils at that angle and as i mentioned before you can see there is a cutout here so Obviously, it's three holes there, but then you have 10 holes here. So those two holes, the top and the bottom row, they line up over top of this whole area there. And then there is also a cutout. So is that no matter which position you have these, whether you have it all the way down to two holes or all the way open to the max amount of holes. So it's really interesting how he did the airflow being that there's three holes on the inside, but it is milled out. So no matter how many holes you have open here, because it is completely milled out in this area, you are going to get direct airflow to the entirety of your coil. So you're not going to have a situation of it cutting off and hitting only 
only one side of your coil or the other. It is going to evenly flow in and hit the entirety of your coil. What I find interesting though is how it divides up each of these holes. So when you have it centered to where it's kind of this part is the very center of the three hole configuration on the inside, you can see where it starts to cut off some of the holes on the outside like that so you have each hole is kind of divided over the bigger hole on the inside so i thought that was really interesting i've never seen an airflow configuration like that where the holes on the inner side were larger and then they were divided by smaller holes on the airflow cap itself so i thought that was interesting so removing the top cap i'll go ahead and show you the inside of the top cap not really domed all that much and stan did give a reason for that in his video i will be sure you guys to link his video where he goes through his thought process and goes over the designing and all of that but he really didn't feel the need to put a lot of doming in there so you're not going to see a lot of dome conical type shape on there but what you do see there is this groove and this groove is what allows this to lock onto your base so here we can see on either side of the rda you have this notch this little bump out and that is going to be where your groove slides over top of and that's going to make this a locking top cap it does have a nice little track in there so you have plenty of room to completely close off your airflow completely open it and and then on the other side completely close it but maintaining that locking feature that allows you to easily remove your rda off of your mod without it seizing up and without you having to really wrench on it so taking a look at the build deck in the inside here you can see that it has a really deep juice well if i put my screwdriver down in there it comes all the way up to here so quite a lot of space down there for juice and cotton. It is a really deep juice well. You have both clamp style posts here. They are spring loaded clamp posts and these are flat head screws. So let me go ahead and switch out from my Phillips to my flat head. So Stan designed an interesting clamp design. I don't think I've ever seen this either on a clamping RDA. And that is that he has these kind of like triangle slopes here so here you can see the arch cut into this top piece and this is going to be the part of your post that is spring loaded let me see if i can go ahead and display that for you here use my screwdriver and push down so as you can see those are spring loaded so as they close down onto your wires it's actually going to narrow that opening and push your leads together so as that they stack one on top of the other so it does have the added bonus that when you these are really long post screws so you can really open this up to get some really good room in there for putting your leads in making it just a lot easier to slide your leads in and even if they are sitting side by side when you originally put them in as you clamp this down because that opening does get smaller with that like triangular shape as you're pushing down it's gonna squeeze those two leads together and push one on top of the other now there is one more feature to this rda that we've yet to go over and that is the removable 510 for direct dreamer hybrid threading so let's go ahead and remove this off that mod and i'll show you that feature so as you probably noticed, there is quite a bit of metal down here at the base. It's quite tall. And the reason for that is because this features two modes, a regular rebuildable dripper mode, which you can use this on a regulated, a mech mod and a hybrid mod. But if you want to use it in full hybrid mode on top of your dreamer mechanical mod, there is an option for that. And to do that, we're going to remove this copper 510 pin. Now this 510 pin is regularly threaded. So let the Lucy righty tidy. And we'll go ahead and remove this copper 510 pin here. And we're just going to keep unscrewing, pull that out. Do be careful. There is a peak insulator there. You want to make sure that you don't lose that when you remove this. And we're just going to continue to unthread it. Lefty, loosey, righty, tidy. And this bottom, whoops. And this bottom 510 plate unscrews from the base of the atomizer. Looking underneath, then you're going to see another copper pin. This is going to be the copper pin that holds in your positive clamp. 
And then over here you see a smaller screw and that is gonna be the screw that holds in your negative clamp. Now there's no reason to remove this pin unless for some reason you're having a problem with your clamps or you're doing maintenance or deep cleaning. But if you do need to remove this pin or you need to tighten it, it is reverse threaded. And that's one of those important instructions that is mentioned in the user manual that I was talking about. So instead of lefty loosey, it's gonna be lefty tidy. Now what I am gonna do, since I'm putting this in hybrid mode, I am gonna go ahead and check that this pin is nice and tight. And to do that, I'm just gonna take my little tool here and I'm just gonna push it to the left a little bit to make sure it's snug. It's nice and snug, it wasn't loose at all. And now I can go ahead and screw that down on my dreamer now obviously i don't have a build in here yet but this is just for demonstration here i have my copper dreamer now i do apologize to you guys that like your copper really shiny and polished mine is getting a bit dingy and about due for a cleaning we'll go ahead and remove our top cap here and then you can go ahead as you can see there's threading on the base of this rda and you're just going to thread it right on top of your dreamer and then you would put your battery in. Anytime you're using a mod in full hybrid mode, or if you're using a hybrid mech mod, that's where the 510 of the RDA is actually making direct contact with your battery. Always make sure to screw your atomizer on first and then put your battery in. So we have our atomizer on first, then we'd go ahead and remove our battery cap, place our battery inside and replace the battery cap. So with it in hybrid mode, you'll notice that there is a little lip here down at the bottom. I'm not sure how well it comes up on camera, but you can see there, there is a little lip. So the outer diameter of this with the top cap on is 27 millimeters, and the outer diameter of the widest part of the Dreamer is also 27 millimeters. So this is going to sit quite flush. Let's go ahead and put that top cap on and you'll see there it slides right up to the copper there and butts up against it. So if you had a stainless steel dreamer and a, you know or matching of course it would butt right up in there and be really nice and smooth and flush on all sides there. So the way that Stan explained why that little ridge is there is to help prevent e-liquid from coming down underneath the mop underneath the atomizer and leaking down your 510 into the battery compartment. That's also why this does not come with a squonk pin. Uh, as Stan explained in his video, one of the issues that he had to be concerned about is e-liquid draining down into the battery. So he made sure to put that little lip there and what that little lip's gonna do is push e-liquid out. So is it, if you do get e-liquid here around your O-rings and stuff, when you push the top cap down, it's actually gonna push that e-liquid out and away from the mod. So as the e-liquid hopefully does not get underneath the base there and travel down your 510. And also that's why they couldn't do squonking because this does have this hybrid mode. So let's go ahead and take this off of the Dreamer here. And we're gonna go ahead and put it back into regular 510 mode. So to do that, we're just gonna screw the base back on. And then we're gonna take our 510 pin, give it a little half turn to the left to make sure it's seated, and then go ahead and turn it right to secure that 510. Now once you feel your 510 snug up, just give it a half a turn. Just make sure not to over tighten your 510. You don't wanna strip it or break it or anything like that. So now that we have it screwed back down onto a regulated mod with the regular 510 base attached to it, we're gonna go ahead and throw a build in it. So the coils I'm gonna be using today are KB Coils, a guy on Instagram. You can find him on Instagram as KB Vapes. He sent over the, these alien coils for me to try. They're gonna be three times 28 gauge wrapped in 36 gauge, nichrome 80, and a dual set should ohm out to a 0 0.15 ohms. I believe Stan said the width of these post holes is 3.5 to four millimeters. So definitely a really big post hole. As you can see, you can fit your screwdriver all the way through these holes. So really nice big holes. I don't think you're gonna have any problems with small round wire just because of the style, the way that these clamps come down and compress over top of that block. I think it's gonna do really well at trapping both round wire and your larger, beefier, big builds. 
So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a coil in on one side. And once I stick my coil in there, what I'm doing is I'm going to look to see lining it up over that airflow. So I have it lined up where I want it over top of that airflow. And then I'm just going to go ahead and clip these leads. So that way I have something to measure my other side on as well. And of course you could go ahead and install both of your coils first and cut the leads after. I usually have trouble getting into my second set of leads. So I like to go ahead and pre-clip my leads just so that it's easier when I install my coils. I don't have to worry about bending or trying to work around a coil to get to the other side. So I went ahead and clipped my leads there and I can go ahead and clip the other side now to mirror that. So I've got one coil installed. Now I'm gonna go ahead and install the other one. I'm just gonna slide my leads in and you might find a little bit of resistance at first and you just kinda need to push and force it a little bit. And then once I got both my leads in there, I'm gonna tighten my screws just a little bit, just enough to where I feel them starting to bite down on that wire. And that's gonna hold my coils in place for me while I adjust them. So once I have my coils positioned where I want them, I'll go ahead and finish tightening the, tightening the post down. So I've got all of my post screws tightened down here and now I'm just gonna go ahead and adjust my coils, play with them and get them aligned right over top of that airflow that's sitting there. And once I have my coils sitting where I want, I'm just going to go back and make sure I tighten each one of these post screws, making sure they're all the way tightened down so that nothing's going to slip out and everything's going to make a really nice connection. And lastly, the last thing that I went ahead and did is I did go ahead and space these. Like I said, they're only five wraps and I found that the post holes are so far apart that it was really kind of spreading my coil and my outer two wraps were non-contact while my inner three wraps were contact. So I figured, well, I'd go ahead and space them out a little bit more, spread them out. That allows me to spread that wire out over top of all three of those airflow holes. And here's what that build looks like. So the airflow is gonna be coming from underneath and hitting the bottom side of the coil. So I went ahead and placed that coil as far up, as far over top of that airflow as I could get it there. And I don't have it sitting very high up either. Of course, you know, this is the first build on the RDA, so I may go back, adjust them. I may find that I want to move them up higher. I may find that I want them even lower. Or I may find that this particular build doesn't work it good for it at all. But we'll see. Let's go ahead and pulse these coils, get them ready to be wicked up. So since I did go ahead and space these, as you guys can see, there is no hot spots, no issues there. Everything is firing really good. They're heating up evenly from the inside out. So I'm ready to go ahead and wick them. And just for reference, these coils are ohming out at a 0.15, so right on the nose. To wick this up today, I'm just gonna go ahead and use these cotton threads just because it is so simple, so easy. They're ready to go right out of the pack and I don't have to worry about cutting or measuring anything. So just make sure those coils aren't too hot and slide that little aglet through. Bring it there. Same thing on this side. So this RDA does have a pretty deep juice well. So if you like your cotton to lay down in your juice well and kind of absorb all the e-liquid in the bottom, instead of having e-liquid free floating down there, you can leave your tails on your cotton a little bit longer. So I'm gonna go pretty long here and I'm just gonna cut those ends off and I'm gonna cut these ends off, leaving a nice pretty long tail there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and comb out the cotton a little bit to thin the ends. So just gonna give it a nice little light comb out there on the ends, thinning it out, making sure all the fibers are going in the same direction. And we'll do that on the other side as well. 
just lightly thinning them out. You want to make sure you don't pull too much cotton out if you feel like it's starting to thin out the center or pull the cotton from the center of the coil, stop. Don't over thin your cotton or you'll find that you're going to get a lot of spitting, gurgling, and dry hits. So let's go ahead and cut out all that extra that I just thinned off. And now we're ready to tuck our wicks. We're going to just tuck them right down there into the bottom. Something to be cautious of, even if you're leaving short wicks or long wicks, either way, make sure that your wicks are not sitting over top of that airflow hole right there. As you can see, these airflow holes, they do span pretty wide. They're actually wider than my coil right now. So I need to be careful to make sure that my wick is not sitting over top of that airflow hole. Otherwise, every time I put e-liquid on my coils, that e-liquid is gonna travel down that wick and right out that hole. So we just wanna tuck it back and make sure that there's plenty of space over those airflow holes and no cotton obstructing it. Now we're ready just to go ahead and put some e-liquid and you can just paint your coils. I will say paint more towards the inside because of where that airflow is situated. If you drip on the outer edge of your coil, you're gonna end up dripping e-liquid right out your airflow. So drip more towards the center to paint your coils there getting the wicks here and then of course you can just go ahead and drip right down the center because there's no airflow there there's nothing getting in the way the e-liquid will just travel all the way down to the bottom of the juice well and then it can soak up that way through the wicks so let's go ahead and pulse that a little bit And you can see the e-liquid is kind of free floating down there as it's trying to find the wicks. We'll give it a little bit more e-liquid here on the center of the coils. Same on that side. And we're just going to go back. And now that our wicks are nice and saturated, we can more easily tuck them out of the way. So again, just making sure that there's no cotton in the way of those airflow holes. And now we're ready to put our top cap on. Again, this is a locking top cap, so no matter which way you put it on, you're gonna twist and find that little notch. It'll click down into place. You can fully close the airflow when you turn it to the right. And then as you turn it to the left, it's going to start to open. And if you keep turning it to the left, it will fully close. And then if you keep turning it, it's going to unlock the RDA off the base. So really nice there that it makes it really easy for you to screw your RDA on tightly as well as unscrew it as well. And that works both when it's in a when it's in its regular 510 base mode or when it's in its hybrid mode, it works really well for that purpose. So now we're going to go ahead and adjust our airflow and I'm just going to go ahead and put it into the main center of those three holes. So there's a little bit of air coming through every single of one of those little holes there. And that is the Ardent RDA. Let's go back up top, have a vape on it, and I'll give you my thoughts and opinions. Okay, and that was the up and close look at the Ardent RDA, a project by Tenacious TX Vapes and Times Vapes. So what do I think about the Ardent RDA? Well, let's get right into the pros first. So pros on the Ardent RDA are going to be fit and finish. Everything on this RDA is done really nice and cleanly. The deck, the top cap, everything about this is really nice and clean. I love the stainless steel finish on here. I like the branding on it. Next is going to be the accessories that are included. You get all of the accessories that you would need for this RDA and if you lose a post screw, even if you lose your 510 pin, they went ahead and included a spare copper 510 pin, which I thought was really awesome of Stan and Times Vape. My next pro on this device is going to be the locking top cap. The feature that they included in the top cap where you can lock it onto the base 
of the RDA and that allows you to easily turn it off and on to a mod and also it keeps your airflow in the correct position. Speaking of airflow, the way that they designed this airflow with the inside being milled out slightly so is that no matter what position your top cap is in, if you're having it with two holes open, four holes, or all ten holes open, you're still going to have the airflow hitting the center of your coil. I really like that. I think that was really nice that they included that and really smart of Stan to think about that. The next pro on this device is going to be the deck design. I'm usually not a big fan of clamping build decks and that's because of the difficulty that comes into play when you're using thicker builds, thicker wire, and you're trying to trap both leads. A lot of times what you end up having to deal with is that one clamp will clamp down more than the other. You'll have to screw one screw down more than the other and it's really hard to get your coils to fire evenly sometimes with a clamp style deck. Now Stan improved upon the clamp style deck by making that triangular shaped piece that comes down over top of the post, essentially pushing your leads together, forcing them to sit one on top of the other. It makes it much easier for when you're putting your coils in there to get good connectivity and a really nice strong bite on that wire so that your leads don't accidentally pop out. So I really like that. Now I will say with the deck design and everything, it is very nice and intuitive, but I would not consider this a beginner's RDA. And there's a few reasons for that. One is because of the hybrid mode. If you are a beginner person, I do not recommend you using mechanical devices or hybrid devices until you thoroughly understand Ohm's law, battery safety, building, and all of the things that go into safely using a hybrid mechanical mod such as this. Now, if you're an intermediate or an advanced user, I think this RD is great, especially if you were a fan of the Dreamer mod, which is essentially what the Ardent RDA was made for. It was made for if you do own the dreamer mod that you can pair it in hybrid mode which is how I have it currently on my copper dreamer so it is 27 millimeters the same size as the dreamer it was meant they are married together when you remove that regular 510 base and you use the hybrid race on your dreamer you're making a direct contact with the mod and the battery which is great for those of you that don't like voltage sag or battery sag, you can appreciate a design like this, and I really do. The majority of the time, I use a regulated mod, and that's not because I don't know how to use a hybrid or a mechanical mod. It's more so for practicality reasons. For me, it feels more practical to go out of the house with a regulated mod that I can power off and stick in my pocket and so on and so forth. And of course, it is single battery. Now, the Dreamer is a single 21700 battery mod, which is great. And with this RDA, it makes this setup fantastic. Now let's kind of talk about cons. I don't really have any cons for this RDA. For the way it's made, the purpose it was made for, I think Stan did a phenomenal job. The airflow on this is really nice and smooth. I love the flavor that I'm getting on it. Now I rock this quite restricted compared to a lot of people. I am vaping with a 0.15 ohm build in here, so it is on the cooler side. It takes a little bit more for it to ramp up, but I have it with only four holes open. I'll go ahead and let you hear the airflow now. Really nice smooth airflow. I don't detect any turbulence whatsoever. I like how he designed, like I said earlier, the him designing that airflow the way that he did, I feel I really feel lends to the performance as well as the smoothness of the airflow. I'll go ahead and put it wide open for you so you can hear what it sounds like wide open. No restriction whatsoever on that airflow. I would definitely consider this wide open a cloud chasers airflow. Now I do lose quite a bit of flavor, but also again, I'm vaping a 0.15 build in there. So it's not a very hot vape for me either but I definitely do prefer restricted down because it bumps up the flavor even more. And when I have it on that restrictive direct lung, I get really good flavor on it.
So let's talk about some subjective cons since I really don't have any main cons for this device. As I said earlier, I feel like this was made really well for what it is, for what it was designed to be used with. I think Stan did a phenomenal job. Now there is a subjective con to this and that's if you like your atomizers to be squonkable. This Ardent RDA does not have any squonkable features to it. You will not get a squonk pin. You can't even install a squonk pin on the Ardent RDA for the way that it was designed and that is the fact that it has that removable 510 base with your hybrid RDA base there that he wasn't able to integrate any kind of squonking feature due to it would be an open port for it to leak down into your battery. That's what I'm assuming and I think he touched on that a little bit in his video as well. So if you're somebody that you must have a squonking feature with your RDA, this RDA may not be for you. If you're an owner of the Dreamer Mech Mod, I think this is a fantastic RDA to pair with your Dreamer Mech Mod. So that's my thoughts on the Ardent RDA. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to Stan and Timesbait for sending over to me to review. You guys have have a great day. Bye-bye.